There are only two things that I need constantly repeated. Any explanation of cryptocurrency I've ever heard, and razor sharp guitar loops that you can practice to. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how to make loops that are on time, uh, no matter what kind of looper pedal you're using. I'm gonna be using an Ortega Quantum Loop pedal for this, along with my trusty D'Angelico Deluxe Atlantic. And it really all comes down to musical counting, okay? Because one thing that you may have noticed if you're just starting out with like a looper pedal is it's kind of hard to get perfectly on time because you need that downbeat, right? So like a super basic thing, if you're just doing like a C, starting it, like, and then switching chords. You'll have, you'll have this thing where it's like, it comes around and it's kind of loose. And then there's that stop, right? And then there's that kind of pause. So you really need these to be razor tight or else it's just gonna throw everything off. Now, the way to do this is to really practice good musical counting and to plan ahead for what you wanna loop, okay? So when I say musical counting, that just means being able to go one and two and three and four and whatever time signature in, it's helpful to practice to a metronome, but eventually you're gonna have your looper pedal become your own metronome, all right? So what I think, a good way to start incorporating this into maybe making tighter loops is to do a percussive counting track behind everything. So I know that I'm gonna plan out like an eight bar phrase or something like that first. So what I'm gonna do without even having anything musical, I'm gonna count the phrase into the looper first. Now what I mean by that is I'm gonna have one bar be like one, two, three, four, okay? Now this is gonna kind of simulate like a percussion track because Basically, 90% of every drum beat ever written, specifically in 4-4 timing, is gonna have a kick on the one and the snare on the three, right? So what that means if I'm counting four, one, two, three, four, kick, two, snare, four, kick, two, snare, four. All right, that's gonna be like a very basic bar of music. Now we can simulate that on a guitar by getting the low end to be the kick and the high end to be the snare, okay? So when I do that, I'm gonna be hitting kind of like a muted hit, all four hits. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the way I'm doing that is I'm just getting the lower maybe E and A string for like that kick for that one. One, two. The two count is gonna be just maybe the D and the G string-ish. And then the three count is gonna simulate the high end of that snare by getting the high end of the guitar, okay? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just like this, okay? So this is kind of like a percussive, not super musical way count something. Now I know that I want to practice something over like, a, like I said, an eight bar phrase. So I'm gonna do eight of these. All right, this is gonna be the first thing that I'm gonna record. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's two for two, four counts or one count of eight, however you want to look at it. And then now I can kind of start adding. All right, so now I have something musical over that percussion track, all right? And then it was just kind of like an A minor G F thing that I have going on. And then once I have that, I can start maybe practicing stuff in a tighter way. Like if I want to practice scale stuff. Double stops. of just do that in the actual musical context of what you're doing, right? So instead of doing like the percussion track first, 
I can start incorporating more percussive elements into the playing in general, right? So again, if we're still thinking of kick on the one, snare on the three, we can just have like a progression like a A minor 11, G to F type thing, like a one. going to be kind of built into the actual playing itself. And three, and four. And then, you know, you can kind of hear thinking about looping in general, having some kind of percussive element is really going to help you out in the long term as far as building your own loops and kind of making them a little bit tighter, all right? Uh, and again, because getting the downbeat is really 25% of the battle in a, in a four count, right? A lot of times, especially when I was first starting out, I somewhat quickly was able to get the downbeat right, but then in that piece of music, all the stuff in between would lag or, or rush or something like that. So I think having some kind of some kind of steady count, whether it's actually part of the musical progression or whether it's just something that kind of gets looped behind everything, is really integral in, as far as tightening up the entire phrase. So anyways, just one idea of maybe kind of like continuing to uh, go on in your looper journey. So if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.